Okay, let's get going. Um, so this is a, a, a short introduction to Perch Runway, um, just to go over some of the, uh, the features uh, and give you an idea of how things work, how it's different from Perch, and um, just to get a, a sort of idea of the product. For those who are in the chat room and following along live, hello, um, you're about 30 seconds behind me, I think. Uh, Rachel's monitoring and um, will uh, in the chat room and we'll be uh, looking out for questions and we'll relay those questions to me um, and we'll probably have a big sort of question and an answer session at the end um, but between you asking a question and me being able to address it there will be, probably be a bit of a delay so don't panic you're not yeah you haven't been missed if um, if you've asked a question and haven't seen an immediate reply so uh, as you probably will have gathered perch runway is a larger version of perch for bigger and more complex projects uh, we always intended perch to be for small sites uh, and it's ideal for retrofitting to sets of, uh, of static pages for building out small sites um, and we had a lot of customers who were asking us for uh, extra features for things that um, would enable them to use perch on much bigger projects we wanted to do that we wanted to address uh, address those uh, suggestions and provide the functionality that people were asking useful but what we didn't want to do is make perch as a product more complicated than it needs to be and make it unsuitable for those small sites so perch runway is our solution to that it's um, there's an upgrade path between perch and perch runway you can move a small site and, uh, over to runway as it gets bigger um, and it, so runway is our way of providing that functionality uh, for larger more complex projects without making perch itself uh, difficult to use uh, or more complex it needs to be for those small projects. So they're two companion uh, products that work side by side. So today we're going to be looking at um, the install process for Perch Runway. Um, there's a few more steps compared to Perch, but it's uh, nice and straightforward, so we'll, uh, we'll walk through that. We're going to be looking at creating pages and how you do that in, in Runway, and how you use uh, Roots, um, which is the system for uh, mapping URLs through to pages. We're going to be looking at the functionality um, that we call collections, uh, which are a bit like multiple item regions that you can use. Uh, they're not tied to a page and they can hold vast amounts of content and you can use them all around your site. We're going to look at cloud storage and using a CDN. And then we're going to be looking at the backup and restore features that are built uh, into Runway. So there's um, a sort of... Uh, a few key differences uh, when it comes to installing and particularly uh, hosting Perch Runway sites. Because it's a, uh, a new version, there's nobody, before we launched Perch Runway, there was nobody already running Perch Runway that we had to um, uh, be worried about their sort of hosting environment and things. So we've actually come with a more modern uh, feature set for Perch Runway. You need slightly more up-to-date versions of PHP uh, and, and a few more capabilities on a server because uh, you know it's sort of understood that you're building uh, larger projects and you you know maybe aren't uh, on the sort of most budget hosting anymore um, you might have something a little bit more capable so perch runway tries to take uh, uh, use of that uh, of those capabilities in your hosting so you need php 5.4 um, perch at the moment is php 5.3 for runway you need php 5.4 so you need a slightly more modern version of php uh, there's some requirements it needs uh, pdo which is the php library for talking to databases it needs JSON support. It needs either GD or Image Magic, which are two different libraries for manipulating images. So for doing imagery sizing and thumbnailing and that sort of thing. And if you want to use the Dropbox functionality, you need 64-bit integers yeah, in in PHP. And if you're on decent hosting, that shouldn't be uh, an issue. Um, and you need MySQL 5.0, which again should be uh, nice and easy. Your server needs some way of doing URL rewriting. So if you use um, uh, Apache as your web server, you might be used to creating a .ht access file and putting mod rewrite rules in there. That's URL rewriting. Uh, if you use Nginx, um, there's a, a configuration file where you can put um, rewrite rules, and that's uh, that's generally available. Uh, if you use IIS on Windows, uh, there are uh, modules for URL rewriting available, and we give you the, uh, the information you need to be able to set that up. And the other thing you need is task scheduling. So you need some way of setting up uh, a task that will periodically run 
to enable things like automated backup to happen when a user isn't pressing a button. Um, so on a Linux type server, that would be uh, something like cron, uh, there are scheduled tasks on Windows, uh, and that's generally how you achieve that. So your hosting needs the capability uh, to be able to set up something like a cron job to run a scheduled task. Normally you can do that through your hosting control panel. So that's um, how um, the sort of server requirements differ slightly from Perch in Perch Runway. So let's um, have a look at the installation process. So I'm doing all this live. So of course it's going to be um, interesting as always. Uh, so this is my empty website at the moment. I've um, I've downloaded and unzipped the uh, the Perch Runway zip and uh, popped it into my site there. So I should be able to navigate to it, and I get the setup page. So the first thing you need to do um, when installing is put in your license key. I think I've got a dummy license key there. Fill out your details for your primary user account. The install location typically is pre-filled for you. Uh, you can adjust the time zone if you need to. And then it's just down to database settings. So I'm going to put in the name of my database. Uh, my username, which is also my password. You can, um, if you if you want to run multiple runway sites within the same database, so if you've got one database and you want to be able to have sets of tables for different um, installs, you can change the table name prefix uh, as you install it. So by default, it's perch2 underscore, um, but you could change that to site name underscore uh, or something like that. And that, that um, string is put on the front of all the table names. So that enables you to have like multiple users tables, for example. Uh, in one database. And if your database server runs on a particular port, you can change that. Um, I'm just going to leave it blank because I'm on the default port. <laughs> there we go. Um, my, uh, my virtual machine uh, occasionally caches stuff, which is uh, a little bit awkward. So there we go. Uh, so that's worked fine. That's set up my database tables. In fact, I should be able to uh, look at my database here. Should be able to refresh it. Yep, that's put all my tables in there. Um, so that's fine. So I can click next. So the next thing uh, that I need to set up is uh, URL rewriting. Um, and so this is the configuration for uh, mod rewrite or um, uh, the uh, Nginx um, rewriting, or then again, if you're using IAS, uh, the rules to basically make sure that any request into your website um, gets passed through to Runway. And then what Runway does is figures out which page it should be serving, gets the master page, gets the content, puts it all together and delivers it to the browser. So you don't need a file for each uh, page in your site. So I'm, I'm running Apache here, so I'll just copy these rules, go into my site, and I'm just going to create a .ht access file, paste that in, save it, and that should all be all I need to do for that. So say we've got give you the configuration if you're using Nginx, and just the instructions if you're using something that we don't uh, don't have a, a copy and paste configuration for. Uh, there's basically only two steps you need to set up. So then it prompts me about scheduled tasks. I'm just in a development environment, so I'm not going to set up the scheduled task, but I'd want to do this on the production server. Uh, if I was using cron and had uh, access to uh, that through my hosting control panel, for example, um, it gives me the, the line to add to my, um, my cron tab. So I'm going to click Next. And if you've installed Perch before, you'll be familiar with this screen. It says, tell me to make sure my resources file folder is writable for uploads, to delete the setup folder, and to configure my uh, license uh, in my chromaperch.com account. Now I've done that. I won't worry about deleting the setup folder because I'm just working locally. And I should be able to log in. I hope. <laughs> There we go. 
again, it was, uh, it was my um, virtual machine caching, strangely. So um, here I am in Runway. And what we do when you install uh, Runway is we automatically set up um, a couple of different pages for you. We create a home page just to, so you can get up and running quickly. Um, we'd expect you to not use our home page, but to edit it and, uh, and make your own, obviously. And we set up this uh, errors folder with a, a 404 error in there. Um, Runway automatically handles uh, 404 requests by sending it to a particular error page. And so we set that up and then would expect you to customize that to, to fit your site. So that's the installation uh, process. Otherwise, it's you know it's pretty much similar to Perch. It's only a few steps. Um, it just requires you to know your database connection details and to be able to get the files onto the server, um, and away you go. So we've mentioned a couple of times about creating pages. Um, uh, and how that's different in in uh, in Runway. There's a it's one of the key areas that is different in Runway than it is in Perch, because Perch is designed to be so good for retrofitting to an existing site. Um, Perch uh, basically works with having a like a .php file for every page of your website. So if you've got a, a the home page, you'll have an index.php. If you've got an about page, you'll have about.php. Uh, your contact page would be contact.php, for example. Uh, and you'll have a, a file in your website that you can see when you FTP in and have a look at the structure of your site. You'll be able to see uh, a file for every single page. That means that when you create a page in, in Perch, um, what Perch actually does is create a file on your disk um, and then uh, either copies or references a master page typically. Um, but it actually creates that file for you. And if you move a page, it picks that page up, uh, the, the file up and moves it to a, a different location. Now, that's great if, you, if you've if you got a set of static pages and you're working with a, a small site in that way. Um, but it can become cumbersome when you've got uh, a much bigger site because then you're having to manage all these files. And when you're moving from, um, from your development environment to the live environment and then back again, you've got to make sure you transfer all the files. And what if someone new on the website and someone new on development? And you have to kind of figure that all out. So it works really well for small sites. It enables you to work really quickly, but it's not so great for bigger sites. So what Runway does is it uses this URL rewriting that we've been talking about and looking at to do away with all those pages. When uh, when a, a request comes into your website, what those re URL rewriting rules do is take the, the path within the site and pass that to Runway. Runway then looks at that and says, right, which, which page should deal with this? Um, and uh, when it finds the page in your page structure, which exists just like it would in Perch, it then looks to see which master page that page uses and loads it up. So master pages play a really key role um, in Runway. Instead of you having a, uh, a page, uh, like a file out in your website, like you do with Perch, you have a master page in your templates pages folder that represents your page. So let's have a look at that. So inside my, uh, my site, I've got my perch folder, templates, and then pages. So inside pages, I've got that home page that, um, uh, that the, in, the install created for me. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty much like uh, a file that you'd have in a perch site, except we try not uh, to mix the HTML and the, the sort of um, content presentation logic uh, so much in Runway. We try and take an approach of using layouts for your, your page sections of HTML and then using templates for anything that wraps content. So as you can see in this page, we're, the first thing we're doing is loading in a global header layout. Then it's got a, an example editable region, which is our heading. Then it's got some navigation, an intro, and then a footer. 
And if we uh, look at that page in the browser, hopefully it won't have cached this time. Yeah, there we are. Uh, so you can see, obviously, there's no content on our page yet, but that's the navigation. There's our home page. So what we could do is go into the home page uh, just as you would with regular perch, pick a template, and then we can say hello world in there. Save that, go back to our page, refresh, and there is our um, our content. So that in that respect is no different. So let's say we wanted to create a, a um, uh, an about page. We'd start by creating a master page. So we're going to templates pages, uh, create a new file called about.php. What I'm going to do is going to take that uh, content from home and copy it across. So I'm going to set my body class to be about. I'll keep main heading, I'll keep the navigation, and I'll change this region to about us. Oh. And then the footer. So that's created a master page. And if I go into uh, master pages inside Runway, you'll then see uh, about then listed. So how would I create a page based on that master page? Well, I just click add page, about. Uh, it's going to be top level. Uh, I pick the, the page I want it to be, which is uh, about. Save that. And uh, that's our, our page created. That's got nothing on it yet. Um, but if I refresh this, you'll see it then appears in the navigation and I should be able to browse to it. So let's set the heading up. Again, just like we would in Perch uh, about us. And there it is. So as far as creating pages are concerned, the key difference with Perch um, is that in Runway, you create a master page that that page is based on. Uh, and then in all other respects, um, it's pretty much the same as far as the, your client is concerned, editing their site, they still get their list of pages. Uh, it still works just like uh, they'd expect it to. Um, there's no difference, as, uh, uh, sort of practical difference as far as the client is concerned. Um, when it comes to editing their content, they can't tell if it's a, uh, a .php file in your site or if it's a, uh, a, some URL rerouting with um, content coming from master pages and the database and, and what have you. So that's basically how um, creating pages works. So the other um, key aspect uh, with the way that pages works is having roots. Now roots are basically the mapping of a URL uh, through to a page on your site. So by default, um, every page just has sort of one root, which is its path. So if we look at our about page, go into the page options, its path is about. So when, uh, when somebody requests your website slash about, Runway looks, finds this page, that's its path, and so delivers it. But what we can do is define other URLs that this page should be available on. So we could, um, using the, uh, the root section of the page options here, I could have, uh, what should I put in here? Um, company, for example. So if I save that, and now my uh, about path still works absolutely fine, but also now if I go to company, I get the same page. Because I've added that extra rule, uh, Runway has uh, uh, looks at the page path, finds there's no page called, called slash company with its path. So then it looks at the company routes and finds that there's, uh, there's a page with a route that is company and so matches it to our about page. So using that, I could set up any number of different um, uh, URLs for one particular page. This becomes particularly useful when you want to um, have uh, sort of parameters and variables in that URL. Um, 
Traditionally, you'd uh, do that by having uh, query string arguments. So you uh, you might have um, you know ID equals one two three in the URL. Um, you can do that in Runway uh, just by defining patterns in the routes, which we're going to look at at a moment when we look at collections. So collections are this new way of managing content inside Runway. Perch has always had, well, has had for many years, multiple item regions, but a region's tied to a page. Um, and multiple item regions are, are good for dealing with a reasonable number of items. Um, but there's, um, I suppose, a drawback of, of multiple item regions is they're always uh, the they're always versioned for drafts and for undo based on the whole region, not with the individual items in the region. So if you wanted with a standard multiple item region, if you wanted to create a draft, you'd be creating a draft of the entire region, not just of an item within the region. So you couldn't have two separate drafts going on at once, for example. You can undo the changes just to one item. You'd have to undo the entire region. Collections version uh, each each item individually. So they're great for uh, large amounts of content. They do sensible things in the interface, like have pagination and customizable columns and, and that sort of thing that uh, that make it great for handling larger amounts of content. And another key thing about collections is they're not tied to pages. So you can use the use the content all the way around your site, but without having to worry about what its sort of home page is, whether it, that page is going to exist in a few versions time, whether it might get deleted, what if it accidentally gets deleted, would the content go away? You know, that sort of thing. So you don't have to do this process of, of creating a, um, a page just to hold uh, a, a sort of database of content, if you like. You can create a collection that holds it, and then that will uh, exist centrally, and you can just pull it into pages on your site. Uh, when you need to. So let's look at creating a collection. So I can go to collections under pages, add a collection, and then just like a region, you give it a key. I'm going to call this one articles. And I'll just use the default uh, example template article for that. So that's my collection created and I can start editing content um, so I can have a hello world article I set this a couple of days ago uh, this is my first article hello I'll save and add another um, second article is here. This is my second article. So there's a couple of couple of items there in our collection. A couple of bits of exciting, riveting news. So in uh, oh, let's look at the uh, the listing of it here. It's, it's um, obviously it's just shown the title. If we go into the options, we can customize. Uh, what appears uh, in that listing. So uh, I'm going to have the heading. In fact, here's, uh, here's one I set up earlier. Heading, the date, and then the author name. If I save that, you can see my listing is a bit makes a bit more sense, doesn't it? When coming to edit things, you can uh, see the information you're after, and you include image thumbnails and all sorts of bits in this listing. Uh, and so that's that's really helpful. So there, there are two really great things about collections that uh, make them fantastic for people who are editing your site. One sort of key problem with having a multiple item region that's tied to a page is although that content uh, is exposed all around your website, you know, on different pages of your site, um, the person editing the content doesn't always necessarily know where to find it. It's not particularly intuitive if you've got you know a page to house that multiple item region and that content's then been put on the home page and in a sidebar somewhere or maybe in a footer on every page 
um, it's not intuitive where to find it. So we try to address that with collections by giving you the ability to um, customize how it's edited. So if you go into a collections options, one of the very obvious things you can do is include it in an app menu. So if I tick that, so if I then look at my apps menu, I've got articles and that's my articles collection. So if I click through to it, there it is. Um, and now whenever I'm in this section, articles is, is listed up at the top as a, as a sort of primary uh, method of, of managing content. So I haven't got to figure out what page it's on, go and find that page. If I want to add an article, I can just go up to articles and there it is. So that's great. The other thing is, say we, we want to pull out the, the latest article onto the homepage of our website. Um, an editor looking at the homepage of their site in their browser might think, oh, that article's looking a bit old. I ought to go and add a new news article, um, make our homepage look a bit more up to date. And it might be a, you know, a few weeks since they've, uh, they've edited the site. They might not remember what they need to do. They'd log into Perch. They'd go to homepage and think, oh, well, where is that content? Collections have a, a, a method of addressing that as well. So if we go back to our collection options, um, in fact, you don't go to the collections options. You go to uh, the, the page options, and there's this section called collections. It's manage from this page and list your collections. So I'm going to say manage from this page article, manage the articles collection from this page. Um, now, it doesn't remove it from anywhere else. It just adds a link to it to the home page. So I go into the home page and then listed are my articles. If I click through to that. I get back to the central location for managing that content, um, just as I, uh, I would have done before. So it makes it really easy for editors to find the content they're looking for quickly, get in, make their edit, get out. And that means they're not phoning you as a web designer to uh, figure out what they need to do. It just means they can get on with their job, get content edited and move on. So we've got our collection of uh, articles. How do we actually put it onto our site? What I'm going to do is put it onto the home page here. So if I go to my code, so of course every page is based on a master page. So I need to go to the home page master page, which is this one. And what I'll do is I will put it uh, under the introduction, which we haven't got any content in for anyway. But so if I want to output a uh, a collection. I just sim simply use perch collection. We gave it the key articles. So if I did that, that would just output the entire collection, which mm, probably don't want. What we just want is the most recent item. So we say um, sort on date, sort order is ascending, uh, sorry, descending. I'm going to set the count to one. So because it's sorting and descending, that's uh, uh, in the reverse order that uh, that they would appear if they were sorted by dates. If they were sorted by date, they'd be newest to oldest. Descending would be oldest to newest. Um, and then we just take, take one item. So that'll give us the newest uh, article off the end. So if I save that, see if the uh, caching demons are on my side. Refresh. Right. Here we are. So our most recent article is the second one I wrote. It says our second article is here. So that's just showing the most recent article, which is great. So what if we wanted to um, provide a page that then listed articles individually? What if I wanted to click through to see a detail page? Perhaps this could just be a headline teaser on the home page, and we want to click through and see the entire thing. Um, what we need to do is uh, let's just edit our template. So we go to content article. This is the template that that's using. Um, and what we'll do is, where's the heading? It's up here. So we'll just wrap a link around it. And we'll make our link articles and then uh, perch content. And we'll use its ID as the link just for now. Uh, type equals hidden because we don't want to edit that. 
So that's a link wrapped around the um, right around the heading there. So if we refresh that on the page, you can see that's a heading now. And I don't know if you can uh, see it's probably too small, but it's taking us to the path slash articles slash two. So we need to create a page to, to handle that. So under pages, we've got a new file, call it article.php. By the way, you can organize all these master pages into templates. Uh, like you see the errors, uh, sorry, into folders. You can see the errors folder here with the, uh, the 404 error template in it. You can um, you can create a folder structure so that you can uh, organize your master pages in a way that makes them easy to find and easy to manage, um, which is obviously important as you as you build up quite a large system of different styles of pages. So again, I'll um, I'll take my about page, copy that, make that an article page. So we'll keep our main heading. Let's get rid of this. So on this article page, we want to do perch collection articles, and then we want to find one particular article. So do that with a filter. So filter ID uh, is equal to, and then what we're going to look for is um, the argument coming in that we're going to call ID. And that'll be coming in on the URL. So we're um, going to find any articles where the ID, now ID is unique, so it'll always be one, where the ID equals the incoming ID from the URL. So if I create that, and if we go back into uh, Runway here, we'll create our new article page. So we'll just call it article. It's going to be at the top level, and the master page is article. Now we don't want this appearing in the main navigation because it's uh, is is not a page we want people to just be able to navigate to directly. We always want to come through to a link to show an article detail. So I'll click hide from main navigation, and then what did I call that link on here? It was slash articles slash two. So what I want to do is add a URL pattern that is articles slash, and then I want the ID. So that's going to be i for an integer, and I'm going to call it ID. So it's a, a, what we call a token in the pattern. That token is uh, is i, which just means it's an integer, uh, so a whole number, um, and then a colon, and then what we actually want to call it, how it, how we want it to be referenced in our page. Uh, and so we're calling this one ID. So if I submit that, now hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, when I click on this link, it should take us to our article page and show us the second article. It does. And if I then manually change this in the URL to uh, slash article slash one, there's our first article. So what we've done there is without having to get in and write loads of mod rewrite rules or anything that's a headache like that, we just set up our page, um, set up a, a simple URL pattern. Um, and it's just enabled us to put that together very quickly without uh, a whole load of hassle. So it's worth talking a little bit about these tokens in the URL. Obviously, you can match things like um, uh, uh, i for an integer. There, you can. Uh, we have a built-in one that is a uh, for slug, which is you know matching anything that's lowercase a to z, uh, zero to nine, and dashes uh, like the um, the standard slug field type produces. You have things like uh, matching gear patterns, uh, uh, month and day for dates, um, and you can also specify your own. Uh, using a regular expression. If you then want to, you know, get really into the guts of things, you want to really customize your URLs. Maybe you've got product listings and your products have a custom SKU uh, uh, code format, and you want to generate a a way of matching those nicely in the URL, uh, more specific than just saying, oh, it's numbers and letters. If you could say it's got to be three numbers, then two letters, then three numbers, or or something like that. Uh, you can write a simple regular expression that enables you to match those in the um, uh, in the URL using custom uh, custom tokens, and you do that in your runway.php file. Uh, 
Uh, I'll just briefly mention that you can, um, if you have a large multiple item region that you think uh, is better to manage as a collection, you can. Uh, there's an import facility. Uh, you can actually import one to the other. So that's particularly useful if you're upgrading a perch site to a runway site. So I'm just going to look very quickly now at the uh, the cloud storage uh, functionality. So this is um, what we mean by cloud storage is basically the ability to rather than keep all your assets on the server with the website, you can um, have them uh, stored on a service like Amazon S3 or Rackspace Cloud Files. Um, so that they can then be distributed by a content delivery network or just so that they're no longer on your server, um, for example, for, for purposes of backup. So if you lose your web server, uh, at least you've got the backup somewhere somewhere else. Um, for big sites, it becomes uh, an issue if you've got very dynamic hosting environments, say you uh, want to spin up multiple web servers that all reference the same uh, set of assets, you can have those assets held uh, centrally. Uh, on a even uh, on a CDN or even just like an in S3, um, so it becomes quite an important uh, an important feature. We manage this through the bucket list, um, and you may already be familiar with the bucket list from Perch. That's a way of just saying when I upload an image or a file, where does it go? Um, and now normally in Perch, that's like which folder on the web server does it go into? Uh, but in Runway, it's either which folder or which service do we put that out to? Um, so there's a, there's when we talk about cloud storage, you often talk about content delivery networks in the same breath. Um, a content delivery network is basically a a, a global network of uh, servers that have copies of your files. Um, when somebody requests, for example, an image, um, it gets delivered to them from the server that's geographically closest to them, so they get it as quickly as possible. There tends to be two different types of CDNs, things like um, Amazon S3 uh, and sorry, uh, Cloud for Amazon CloudFront, which is uses S3, um, is what you call a push CDN. So you actually have to take your files and, and push them up to it. And then there's things called pull CDNs. Now, pull C CDNs, um, if they haven't got, if they're asked for your file and they haven't got a copy of your file, they come to your website and grab it. So they're much much simpler to set up. Uh, a really good example is CDNFI, um, who we've actually got a, um, a, a simple walkthrough on our site. I think they've got a walkthrough on their site of how to set up with Perch as well. Um, it's really, really quick to get going. Basically, all you do is you, um, once you've signed up for an account, you create what they call a resource, which is um, pretty much just the URL of your website. So you give them the, the URL of, of where they can find your site, you give it a name, and what they give you then in, in uh, response is a URL. You put that URL in front of any uh, asset links on your site. So instead of um, it asking for logo.png on your web server, the, the website visitor's um, browser will ask CDNify for logo.png. And CDNify will either deliver it if it's already got it, and if it hasn't got it, it will go to your website, fetch it, cache it, and then deliver it to the user. So in your buckets list, it's really easy to set up once they've given you the URL. You just set up a bucket. Uh, you can also do it in the config.php if you want to do it for all your assets. Um, but you basically set up a bucket um, and set the web path to include their um, the CDNFI URL in front of the path to your images or files or however you want to do it. So that's really easy. Um, I believe that the movable type Pro CDN works in a movable type. Media Temple, get my N MTs mixed up. Media Temple um, Pro CDN works the same way. Um, a similar approach of, of pulling the stuff from, pulling the assets from your site if it doesn't already have them. So you don't have to get too involved. So those are really easy, lightweight um, solutions that are very quick to configure. Once you're into push CDNs, uh, it is more complex 
um, uh, it's a more complex ecosystem. So you need something like runway to actually support that um, to take the headache away from uh, from you. Um, Amazon S3 uh, is a cloud storage service. So it's a location where you can upload files. And then it's paired with a service called CloudFront. And CloudFront is the CDN. And CloudFront will actually serve files from an S3 uh, bucket, which is what, S3, um, what Amazon calls a uh, basically a, like a folder in S3. It's called a bucket. And uh, CloudFront will serve files from that. So it's a really popular choice. Um, as long as you don't get too massive, it's quite um, uh, reasonably priced and it's like pretty robust. Amazon obviously have a lot of web services. The one you want is uh, top left that's S3. So basically you set up an S3 bucket, um, you give it a name, And then once you've got that um, set up, you go into the CloudFront configuration and you create what they call a distribution. So that's basically a bucket that uh, it distributes via the CDN. And uh, what that gives you is basically a, um, you get some authentication information from S3 and you get a, uh, a distribution URL from CloudFront and you put those into your runway dot uh, php um, well you put the the authentication credentials into the runway dot php you put the set up a bucket with the uh, the url uh, for cloudfront in your buckets dot php and then you start using the bucket in your template oh, so this is just setting up the distribution then from uh, in cloudfront you see you pick your um, your bucket and then it gives you a uh, a domain name so in your runway.php file, you'd put your Amazon S3 credentials and you set up a bucket in your buckets.php file that then uses those credentials. So you see the type is Amazon S3. So that's re referencing the, um, the Amazon configuration. And then the web path is giving it the CloudFront URL where all those assets are going to be. Pretty much the same configuration goes for Rackspace Cloud Files, which is another popular one. And Cloud Files is based on, on an open source project uh, called OpenStack. And there are lots of other uh, companies that offer OpenStack um, hosting. Uh, a UK hosting company we use called Memset uh, offer uh, a service called uh, Memstore, which, which is based on the same thing. Um, so there's lots of options, but Rackspace Cloud Files is the is the big one that uh, everybody hears about. So I've got a um, could look at a quick demo of that. How are we doing on time? We're running a bit late. I'm going to speed up. <laughs> In fact, I'll do the I'll move on to the backup and I'll do the demo of the uh, CDN stuff uh, uh, afterwards because then if people need to uh, uh, need to move on, then they can. So one of the really great features in uh, Runway is the automated backup. Um, it enables you to basically set up a scheduled backup so you don't have to uh, intervene. You don't have to remember to do anything. You can configure it and then forget about it and it'll just keep backing up. Um, you can back up to um, any of the cloud storage solutions. So you can back up to Amazon S3. Obviously, you'd configure a S3 bucket that isn't shared via CDN for your backups. You don't want to share your backups with the world. Uh, you basically you'd create a um, uh, a private bucket for that, uh, which on Amazon they're private by default unless you share them. Uh, so you'd create a private bucket, or you could do the same on uh, Rackspace, create a bucket, or you can use Dropbox. And I think uh, Dropbox is a really great solution because you can sync it into your Dropbox account, and then you see, you know, as you're sat working at your own machine. Um, you can see your website backups popping in once a day or whatever. And, you, you know, you don't have to think about it. You just see that they've happened. Um, and that's nice and reassuring. And then you've got a copy of that um, backup everywhere that you've got Dropbox set up. Setting up Dropbox isn't as straightforward as I, I would have liked it to be from the Dropbox point of view, but it's pretty straightforward, all the same. You basically need to go to their developer uh, sort of center and create your own Dropbox API app. Um, what this does is it 
basically sets your website up as an app that is allowed to use Dropbox. Um, it then saves all its uh, backups into an apps folder inside Dropbox, so it doesn't have access to all your Dropbox stuff. Um, there's, there's sort of it's, it's siloed, which is quite nice and secure, uh, and a really nice approach. Um, so it puts things into that uh, apps folder, uh, and that's just where your backups go. So I mean, let's look at the process a bit. You have to go to dropboxcom developers and then say and go to the app console and you want to create an app. You say, oh, I want to create a Dropbox API app and I'm going to store files and data stores. And it can be limited to its own folder. And then you just give it a name, which may as well just be the URL of your website. And you click create app. And what that does is that gives you an access token. And there's step-by-step -step walkthrough in the documentation for all the things you need to fill out uh, for this uh, for this step. It's only one page, but um, it gives you an access token at the end. And what you do is you take that access token and put that into the Dropbox section in your runway.php file. And that's basically what you need to do to configure um, your site to be able to access Dropbox. <laughs> no, it's not. You need to add a bucket. So you've got Dropbox configured. Um, the site can talk to Dropbox. You then just create a bucket that uses Dropbox. So here I've created one that is just called Dropbox, and it uses Dropbox. Um, easy. Ooh. So let's see how that works in practice. Backups all managed under the settings section. So you go settings backup. You can see I've got no backup plans at the moment. So I'm going to add a plan called daily. I want it to back up my database and my assets. Uh, run every 24 hours, why not? And I want it to go to uh, Dropbox. So this target bucket box lists any bucket that's configured that is a, a cloud storage backup, uh, a cloud storage bucket. You can't back up to your local machine because that doesn't really give you a great backup because then if that web server goes, um, for whatever reason is compromised or hosting company has problems or there's catastrophic hardware failure, you haven't really got a backup if if your backups are on the same machine as your um, as your website. So we encourage you through this to actually get those backups off your web server. So I'm going to mark it as active. Now, if you remember during installation, I didn't set up um, scheduled tasks. This actually won't do anything, um, but I can click backup now. And what that'll do is back up my database and my assets and put them into Dropbox, which it says it's just done. Um, what I can also do is if I go to the top level of backup, I can just say restore, pick one of my um, uh, cloud storage uh, buckets, click find backups, and that looks through and finds any backups that are in there. So you can see here are my test backups. Uh, in my Dropbox account. Um, and uh, so what's the date today? It's November the 14th. And oh, that, so there's the one that we just uh, we just made. Uh, you can also then just click restore. And what that does is just puts it back. Easy. So that's, uh, that's backup. It's really great because even if your client isn't interested in setting backup up, and having it running and, and backing it up themselves. If you're if you set it just to back up into your own company Dropbox account, for example, then if the client ever has a uh, a nightmare scenario where they've lost all their content or you know their web server's gone down or um, uh, you know somebody's uh, gone in and deleted things they shouldn't have deleted, then you can be their their knight in shining armor and come and put it back for them really easily. Um, so I think that's. Uh, I think it's already a great feature. So that was everything I wanted to show apart from I will go back if if we've got time and, and show the uh, the S3 stuff. But Rachel, were there any questions? Um, I've got a question from Scott Gruber. How does this add another link from Boots work? How? How does he sort of what is it? You know, the add another So Scott was asking the question about um, uh, when we we're configuring routes. Uh, what does the add another link do? The add another link adds another. So I can, if I wanted to have articles and slash article, uh, I could do that. So I've got the plural and the singular. And so I could just change that and it still works. 
Uh, and you can basically, you can add as many of these as you like. So we could have slash news. And that would work as well. So you can add as many URL patterns as you want uh, for a page. And, and sometimes you might have quite a lot if you think about the example of the blog app. If you've configured the blog app in Perch, the archive page that we give as an example works in loads of different modes. It will show you archive posts from categories, from tags, from months and years uh, by author. It, does lots of, it has lots of different modes that it operates in. And there's lots of different arguments that could come into it. Well, you can set that up with as many different um, as many different routes as you need. If I now go to the root section here, I can see that uh, all the routes that I've got defined for the site. And what you do need to be careful of is uh, sometimes you can have routes that will match multiple things. Um, and so what you need to do is make sure that you have, uh, if you if you do end up in a situation where you've got two routes that will match the the same thing, you can basically set the order that they're matched in, and the first one that's matched will um, will take precedence. So you go to reorder, and you just move them around until they're in the right order. It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, that's a uh, a tool you can use to uh, to work around that. Any more questions? So this question, what features have we got planned for the future? Basically, everything that we um, put into uh, Runway will be designed as um, features for uh, bigger sites and for people who are, uh, are building those bigger sites and maybe want to streamline their workflow more um, and wanting to deliver more complex projects. Um, there are cases where we've, uh, a, a good example of this is the categories functionality that went into Perch 2.6. That was originally planned to be a, a runway feature, um, thinking that people would want to manage content. Uh, you've got a lot of content, you want to manage it more uh, with categories. And uh, that was something that we were going to uh, add just for runway. We realized actually categories is useful for smaller sites too. And we have, um, uh, we have apps that use categories already, things like blog and events, uh, gallery and um, uh, gallery, does gallery have categories? I can't remember. But we have we have examples of categories already, so we might as well have centralized categories uh, within Perch as well as within Runway. So one thing, it, Runway doesn't uh, mean that we're no longer adding stuff to Perch. Where things make sense for small sites, it goes into Perch. If it only makes sense for bigger sites, it goes into Runway. Um, as for specific features, uh, have we got anything that we're... Hmm. we we um, we very deliberately don't publish a roadmap of what we're working on um, because what we don't want to do is until a, until a red a feature is pretty much ready to to go and we know that it's it's all working you know nicely and is um, we haven't hit any unexpected problems um, we like to keep things under wraps because we don't want anyone banking on those features for an upcoming project only for us to hit against a problem that means that we push it back or maybe just a bigger priority comes in and we push a feature back uh, and don't you know might not release it for another six months for example that would be a real pain if you'd quoted for a project knowing it was coming off in a month and you'd expected that functionality to be there by then and that could land you in a real mess. So we don't um, promise stuff that we haven't got, you know, pretty much imminently ready to ship um, for that reason. Uh, so I think all we can say is the the features are focused around bigger, bigger sites with more complex requirements and there will be lots of them. <laughs> this is uh, the... Um, the functionality that we launched uh, Runway with was, you know, just really the almost the the bare minimum. We felt it needed to be a a viable, useful product for people. Thinking then we'd listen to feedback, and we've got a, a long list of stuff. Then we'd love to add, uh, and we're going to be getting to that um, 
then as as we sort of uh, see how people are using it um, rather than waiting months building in loads of functionality and finding that actually that wasn't what people needed so um, if you've got specific suggestions post the suggestions area in the forum and that really helps us clarify what uh, what features to prioritize next uh, do I use sublime text uh, in daily use yes I use pretty much only sublime text um, usually not with the font as large as I have it today but <laughs> but yes um, I use uh, sublime text for pretty much everything Okay, I think that was all the questions, although perhaps uh, if you interrupt me if we get any more. Um, and I'll just, shall I go through the S3 stuff? Let me just show you the S3 stuff um, then. Uh, but otherwise, we're, you know, if you want to tune out, if you've, um, we've, I see, uh, I've waffled on and we've, uh, we've gone much, uh, much longer than uh, anticipated. Um, so if you want to tune out, do feel free. Um, but I was, otherwise, I'll just show you things and bucket stuff in action for those who are interested. So to add an image, um, I've created my bucket already for Amazon. Let me have a look. So I've got an Amazon S3 bucket already set up in my buckets.php. So what I need to do is go to my template, which is the article template we're working with. I'll add an image into that that uses that bucket. So perch content, call it image, type is image. Bucket is Amazon S3. Let me check I've got that right. Yes, it's called Amazon S3. Let's just control the dimensions of it. Um, I'm just saying output equals tag just to give us an image tag. Nice and easy. I always give a label for the admin image. Uh, so that looks fine. Okay. So if I go back to my um, articles let's go to that hello world article I've now got a field for an image say so add asset to find an asset upload that hopefully it won't take too long to push it up to Amazon with me saturating the our uh, office bandwidth with um, sharing my screen right, there we go you selected save that it's now pushing the resized one up to uh, Amazon. So it's normally much uh, much snappier if you're on a live web server because you've got obviously got the full bandwidth between you and uh, and Amazon to deal with that rather than on a constrained uh, network connection. So if I refresh that, then there's my image. Oh, it's a portrait image, so it uh, came out quite large. Um, but if I inspect it, you can see that then that's being served from, um, well, you might not be able to see, uh, it's being served from cloudfront.net, um, which is the uh, the CDN. So that's gone up to Amazon, is then being relayed through Cloudfront and is being used. So that was uh, that's sort of how easy that is to get up and running. Uh, and obviously the same then goes for uh, uh, for Rackspace Cloud Files and, and what have you. So are there any more questions? Right. So I think we'll probably wrap it up. Thanks for coming along. Uh, and, and taking time to find out about Perch Runway, really appreciate it. We hope that Runway will be useful for um, some of your bigger projects and maybe some of the projects you used Perch for previously, but if there's functionality that you like in Runway, you might um, might choose to use that instead. Um, you'd buy, you know, by all means, you don't need to uh, sort of go full out on all the features just to find one or two of them useful. So I think it's... Um, I think it's a it's a good string to our bow uh, in terms of uh, content management, and uh, we hope that you'll uh, you'll enjoy using it. So thanks very much. <laughs>